Hey Daily Dosers, I'm Gina. I work on the Vista campus with the kindergarten through fifth grades, and I'd like to share a hidden gem from the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel. But before we dive in, let me give you a little bit of background. We're looking into a time when the Israelites were insisting that God give them a king, a human king, because up until then, God had been their king, and he had demonstrated his faithfulness and his goodness and his power and his provision time and time again. But they insisted, we want a king, because they wanted to be like all the other nations around them. And so the rejection of him as their king probably broke his heart, but he gave them what they wanted. And the first king that he chose for them was a man named Saul. And Saul got off to a good start, but he made a couple of really poor choices that led God to look for his successor. And he found that in David, of David and Goliath fame. The David that, that the Bible describes as a man after God's own heart. Now David was anointed to be king at a young age, as a young teenager, but didn't actually get crowned as king until many years later, 15 to 20 years later. And he spent much of that time running for his life because Saul was jealous of David. He was jealous of his fame, of his favor with God. And that jealousy grew so intense that he became obsessed with killing David. Well, enter Jonathan. Jonathan is Saul's son, as well as David's best friend. And I think that would have been a really awkward place to be in, given the dynamic between Saul and David. But the Bible gives us a little insight, a little glimpse into the type of friend that Jonathan was to David. In 1 Samuel 18, verse 1, it says, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. Now, he was even, as the rightful heir to the throne, he was totally supportive of David being the next king, even though he was the, rightfully the one to be the next king after Saul. So it came a point when David wanted to test Saul's motives, and he asked Jonathan to help him. And Jonathan did, and as a result, the two had to part ways in order to spare David's life. And this caused them so much sadness and grief. They even wept over it because they thought, we'll never see each other again. And that sets us up for our gem. In 1 Samuel 23, picking it up in verse 15, it says, While David was at Horesh in the desert of Ziph, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul's son Jonathan went to David at Horesh and helped him find strength in God. All right, so when I was reading that, I had to take a time out because two things jumped out at me. One, David needed help finding strength in God. Okay, wasn't this the man after God's own heart? Wasn't this the next anointed king of Israel? Didn't David know that God was in control and that his plan would succeed regardless? Yeah, I think David knew that. Just as I know that there are times and circumstances in my life when I have fear and doubt and discouragement. And that's when my friends have come and helped me. The second thing that jumps out is, how did Jonathan know where David was? How did he know that David needed help? How did Jonathan show up at the right place and the right time? Well, I think it's because Jonathan was the type of friend that even though David was out of his sight, he wasn't out of mind and he certainly wasn't out of heart. It's because I think Jonathan prayed for David on a regular basis. I think he asked God to protect him from his crazy father and the enemy's evil schemes. I think Jonathan made himself available to be used and led by God in this situation. I think that Jonathan wasn't too busy to help his friend. And the story continues. We learn that David had not one, but two opportunities to exact revenge and kill Saul. But both times, he doesn't. Instead, he chooses to respect Saul as king and honor God's decision to put Saul in a position of authority over him. And I just can't help but wonder if David's choices would have been different had Jonathan not been there in his time of need. So North Coast, couldn't we all use a Jonathan-like friend who loved David as himself and was completely surrendered to God's will? If you don't have one, I encourage you, pray for one. Seek one out, join a growth group. And in the meantime, I think the best way to gain a Jonathan-like friend is to be one. If God puts someone, a friend on your heart, pray for them. If he puts a friend in your path, be an encouragement. If he leads you to a place where you can help a friend, follow and obey. Your friend will be so glad you did, and so will you. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.